everybody. Welcome to my live stream. I think I'm going to try doing these about every month and a half, two months or so. Who knows? I tried setting up a, this thing called a stream key that works really well on Crowdcast, but it looks, it just works really terribly on both Facebook and YouTube. Everything goes belly up. It's supposed to give me this really specific URL so I can tell you exactly where to be instead of just, hey, go to my channel somewhere and it might show up. <laughs> but that one didn't work. So we are here just through the regular old way that it sends to YouTube. And I'm glad to see you all here. I am going to be doing some scribble sketching today. And I'm excited to be able to share that with you. It's a really fun and easy way to do some sketching. Let me switch over here to the view that you can see of, oops, that's kind of crooked, isn't it? Let's get straight. How, how about that? That's better. And yes, um, thank you for telling me where you all are from. It's good to see so many locations popping in for the live stream today. Yowza, yowza. Let me straighten this up so I'm in the little circle when I'm talking. <laughs> oh, these technology things. Anyway, I'm going to be doing a scribble sketch today. And I thought I'd show you a couple of the ones that I've done before. I couldn't find the bear. The whole sketchbook that had the bear in it that I had here on YouTube is just gone. It's just poof gone. I don't know where it went. But I did this the other day, a uh, tiger cub. Not a baby tiger, but a tiger cub, a young tiger. And he came out really beautifully. This was a little doodle that I did of a sloth recently. And then I thought I'd show you this other one that I just posted on social media recently as well. It's kind of a big one. And drew the capital. I just wanted to see what it would be like to draw a building like this instead of just drawing animals. The things that tend to work really well for scribble sketches are live things, things that are moving and have some action to them. But, you know, you can do all different kinds of things, obviously, in scribbles. So I'm going to set these aside. And I thought I'd talk a little bit about what a scribble sketch is good for. Because you might be thinking, it's a mess. Why would you bother making a mess on a piece of paper? Well, because it's going to loosen you up. What I find is that a lot of people end up, like they want to draw an apple. So they do this and they... Very carefully draw an apple and then they're not happy with that and then they erase it and they start all over again. Well, if you draw an apple and instead of drawing that, if you start drawing a circle, so it's going to get you to somewhere round and if it's got maybe two, um, you know, two lumps on top, you know, these two parts, then you start doing that and you add in your stem or your leaf and then start building up your shadows by scribbling in the areas that are in shadow. And not scribbling just, you know, it's not like this. It's just very loose. Notice how loose I'm holding the pen. I'm just letting the pen do the work, letting my arm do the work. My whole hand is off the table. I'm not sitting here trying to do this. Just letting, I'm, I basically make a lot of figure eights and connect them all and, you know, turn your hand, make them different directions, but you can get to lots of deep shadows and creating an apple that's going to look a lot more like an apple without stressing out over, oh my goodness, did I make that shape right? And what if I got it wrong on the first try? And what if it doesn't look quite right? Well, it's really easy with these scribble sketches to just give it some life, you know, and if I decide, okay, it's too round, I want to make it taller, then I can just add onto my apple by adding more scribbles to it. And it starts looking much more realistic than this ever will. 
It's just really, really simple. Um, see, is there any particular pen best? It doesn't really matter. You can do this in a pencil. You don't even have to do it in a pen. You can do it in a, um, in a Sharpie marker. You can do it in whatever you want to do it in, whatever you want to sketch in. You can grab a felt tip pen and do it. It's just a matter of getting enough scribbles out there on your paper that it starts to get some form to it. And you get something that's got roundness to it without having to go, okay, well, now I'm going to do a little line here and I'm going to try to make a shadow. And, oh, no, I didn't make it parallel. And people can get really hung up on all of that where this is going to give you the freedom to get looser. And in the 30 Days to More Confident sketching class that a lot of people have taken and have said by the end of the class, they finally started getting it and they, they got looser. They they started feeling more confident to just put lines down. This is also going to help you to build your confidence. So are you seeing color in the black ink? No, this is just plain black ink. You could do this in color. I know people do it in, in ballpoint pens. I see them. There's, you know, look up scribble sketching online and you will find a gajillion examples. Most people do portraits. I don't know why that is. It just what people do, they do portraits. Um, I don't do portraits really well, and maybe this will get me there. That would that would be my hope. So I am going to uh, work on, I had several people give me suggestions in this past week about what to draw today for my scribble sketch. And I decided I never did get to draw Rockefeller the Owl when Rockefeller the Owl was in the um the rockefeller center when he arrived in the the christmas tree if you remember that in new york city they ha they like brought the tree in from somewhere and there happened to be this little owl in it little teeny tiny one i mean he he if you have him on your hand he's like this tall he's like a little tiny baby but he's got these really big eyes and so i sketched him out so that i would have a basis to start from but literally if you can i don't know if you can see that i drew his eyes and the beak. Those are the things that are going to be important here. And then a general outline of how big I think his head and his body are. And that's it. If you start putting in a ton of details, you're going to get all lost in the details. This is, I just drew enough because the, the eyes are going to be really the thing for him that's going to be important. On my tiger, I started with the eyes and the nose and I marked in where his ears would be. And then I just went for it after that and just built it up slowly to get to all of that texture around him. So I'm gonna do something similar except with his eyes. Yes, he was a saw wet owl, indeed. So um, I'm gonna kind of start with his eyes and, and just give myself kind of a, a general beginning to the eyes. And I'm gonna do the same thing as I did previously when I was drawing that little apple or peach, as someone said it was. But he's got a little highlight on one of the eyes. So I'm going to carefully leave that highlight. Since his eyes are important, it's the only place on this that I'm going to be careful because I want his eyes to be roughly the same size. He's also got white around the eyes. So I'm going to make sure he's going to have a little bit of white around his eyes. Other than that, don't you, you need to not stress out about all the details about it. So the great thing about scribble sketches is that they give you a lot of motion and you can you can just really go crazy in getting like this tiger looks like he's breathing. He's got just all these scribbles that go out this way. And the way I did that um was just to start out from the drawing or from the eyes and start to just give myself that looseness and I'm just going to let it go now this may not be the way everybody starts there's all different kinds of people that have different methods but for me in order to get that looseness if I do this it messes it up it messes me up for being perfect so there you go is it best to hold the pen or pencil loosely? I would think so, yes. I think I hold this fairly loosely. I'm not gripping it at all. 
I'm just, I'm holding it just like that. So now I'm going to start building out from my little owl's eyes. And remember, I, I said I'm just making figure eights. I'm just going around his eyes, making all these figure eights. Do, 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 do. Because this is going to... This is going to just establish that looseness so I don't get all stuck trying to make everything perfect on him. See how easy that is? Now I'm quickly losing any sketch that I did down below it. So do you see why it's important not to spend all your time creating the, you know, any kind of sketch here? Because really I'm just, I gave myself that outline for the head so I know where the head's going to be and that's all I need. Is the camera creating color on the scribble? I think it must be the camera creating it because it is simply black and white is all it is. So he's got a little beak that has dark underneath of it so I'm going to just establish some scribbles underneath where I think the the beak is going to be. And now you start seeing the owl immediately come out, right? Well, I don't want all these lines to look like I did a big circle. So I'm going to start going in now and making smaller figure eights in all different directions around here. Because that's going to start to make the lines around his eyes. Because he's got really big dark circles around his eyes. It's going to start making it look darker he's going to get more contrast but I'm not doing it by doing this that's the moment when you're going to lose that energy of the scribble because the nice thing about scribble sketches is that that ability to just have some energy and have it move and have the animal look like it's alive or whatever the subject is and I can go in here and darken up the centers of the eyes even more. But I'm not trying to like stay in a circle here. I'm just, I'm squinting while I'm drawing. Because if I squint while I'm drawing, I can see where things are missing. Like, you know, there's a little spot in here that, that looks like it's lighter. And I can go in and break, break up those kinds of things. Now he's got some markings on the top of his head that kind of come in like this, like a little V on the top of his forehead. And if you even want to open another tab and look up Rockefeller the Owl, you will see lots of pictures of him because he's cute as all get out. And now I've got that shape appearing above his eyes because he's got like white eyebrows. And no, don't use a white pen. Don't go in with a white pen. Uh-uh. Just leave it. And um, eventually, I'm probably going to be drawing right over some of that white outline in there. Probably. Um, just because the more I work on these, the more I get carried away and the more excited I get. And then I start adding all different kinds of um, depth to it. And that's what makes it realistic. Um, in this guy... There are scribbles all throughout his eyebrows and stuff and all throughout these white parts, but they still appear white because the parts outside of them are darker. And that's what the, the goal is going to be. And I'm going to start to darken in some of these spots. Now he's got a couple markings on his head and I would show you the picture if I'm legally avail al allowed to but I feel like I will be infringing on someone's rights to show that to you but you can look at any of the pictures of Rockefeller and see exactly what he looks like so he's also got you know this this white continues around here and even though I've scribbled all this it's going to appear white if I put the markings in darker. 
See how much that turns white because of the contrast of what's right next to it? And I can do the same thing on this side for his other little markings. And then I'll join that up to his little beak. And you see how the owl is starting to appear? So he's got more markings as the head goes back in here. Now I don't want to have an outline around him that looks like this because I find that just that loses all that energy, all that outward motion. So I'm going to allow some more big scribbles to go out from my owl. And then as I come in and I start adding in more controlled sections where the shadows are, that starts to create a really soft edge between the owl and the background or whatever's going on back there. but he gets lots of energy from all of these wonderful lines that come out all different directions, which is kind of fun. Now underneath of these two parts on the eyes, I've got some smaller sections with some fuzz in them, some darker fuzz. So I'm gonna go in here and just start to make some more controlled marks but they're still scribbles. They're the same shape as the other ones had been. But it just starts to add in stronger contrast in some areas that makes other areas look lighter by comparison. I mean, when all of this is done, I'm going to post this on social so you can um, go look at the actual photograph because if it's giving you funky things looking at it on your video screen then I apologize but you'll be able to see a lot clearer that there's tons of scribble everywhere not just on the parts that look dark so as he as his wing starts to come down this way, I could, you know, like you'd be tempted to just make a lot of little lines going this way to make his wings. Well, we want to keep this and this in the same kind of fun scribble style. So don't let yourself get too hung up if you, you know, find yourself doing something too regular. That's when it's time to break it all up. And I'm letting my whole arm move. I'm not just, you know, holding my pen this way. I, my whole hand and, and arm are moving. My elbow is moving when I do this. So then he's got some little curves in his, his wings that come around this way as well as some that go out that way. And I can capture each one of those just by taking the scribbles and darkening in some of the areas that are going to give me those curves. You see, I'm, I'm getting a curve this way and this way, and then this one comes under. So it's all a matter of letting your scribbles create all of that. But join them with enough other scribbles, and you can go all, all different directions, have at it. Now right here, I accidentally made a straight line. I'm going to hide that straight line by scribbling around it. So if you find yourself going too rigid on something, just scribble around it. And 
create some more motion. It's got a little light spot under here and then it gets dark again. <laughs> Loosen your hold on the pen, just let her go. That's why this is good practice. And I didn't get this, this whole concept down. I, I was just looking at different styles of sketching online just to see, you know, what am I missing? What am I not doing? What, how are other people using the medium? And I found scribble sketches and I started just looking for more scribble sketches and just came upon some of the most amazing drawings I think I've ever seen. And I've just gotten all kinds of excited about it ever since. And I just, it's a great way to just spend a little while in the evenings in front of the TV or whatever you're doing and just let yourself be loose. You know, sketch your kitchen or sketch your kids or your own pet or whatever. Pull up a photo on the internet and just, you know, start to see what you can do to replicate those shapes because the thing, the thing besides getting looser that this is going to let you do is start to see in terms of light and dark. Because the only thing that's giving any definition to any of these sections is that this one is darker than this one, and this one is darker than that one, and, you know, that one is darker than this one. Like, the relationship between all of those darks and lights is only coming through because that's what I'm seeing and trying to replicate. And if you can start to see that in your drawings as you, you start to practice, you're going to end up being a better artist when you pick up any other medium because you're going to immediately start to see in terms of shadows, highlights and shadows. And that's when, what's going to give your work its depth. Because you're going you're gonna to be able to notice that more. A lot of people just struggle with trying to make something realistic because they're thinking so much while they're trying to create a shadow and they're thinking, where's the light? Where's the sun at? And, you know, what is that shadow looking like? Just draw what you see. If you see a dark area, draw a dark area. And I look at, you know, what does that dark area look like? Remember I said that there was some areas where the, the fur starts to curve in this way and the feathers? Then that's what I'm going to try to do is replicate those shapes. I'm not worried about whether or not it looks right to my eye right now. I'm looking at does it look right compared to what I see and what I'm, the subject that I'm trying to draw. Because for the most part, once you finish this, it will be at a point where you can, you can see the forest for the trees. But this is going to keep you from getting hung up in trying to draw every little feather on this bird. Because he's, he wouldn't be nearly as alive and looking like he just came out of the bath and he just had a, you know... Just shaking himself off, he just looks adorable. But if you tried to replicate that by drawing it real carefully, it'd be a lot harder to do. A technique like this just automatically adds the energy to the lines. Now a lot of these feathers in here are kind of white. But I'm not worried about it because I can go in and put in darker areas next to them. And as I start to darken the areas that are really black on him, it's going to make the other areas start to look whiter. See how all of a sudden I'm starting to get some dimension in here? In this just little tummy section.
These are just so relaxing to do. Goodness gracious. Stress-free, man. Now he's got his little legs down here. And the picture that I am working from, he's sitting on a tree branch. So this is just after he was released back into the wild. I'm sure he was confused. Where the heck had he been? Because if I were a little owl and had made a trip into New York City that I was not expecting, I would have been very upset. <laughs> So no wonder he's got a funky look on his face. Now this bird also has, um, around this outside, he's got a white edge here. So what I'm going to do is create some negative space around him by adding in some of the background. But again, I'm not going to try to make it a strip of this to outline him. I want it to look like it's part of all of the scribbles. So while I do some heavier scribbles right next to them, as I start working my way toward the outside edge, then I just kind of let that fade as much as scribble lines can fade, I'm not sure it's really fading, but it, it gets lesser as it moves out. Uh, the paper that I'm using is a Hanamula lettering paper, which works really nicely with fountain pens. I like it quite a lot. It's a very smooth surface. And my pen doesn't get scratchy on the surface. The pen I'm using today, by, by the way, is my Visconti. You can certainly use any fountain pen, or like I said, just use a Sharpie. Any kind of thing will work. So I'm even going to let the background... start to get darker in here too. Just let there be some areas of light versus areas of darkness so that it doesn't look too perfect here. And the further I get, the more I squint. Squinting at it is going to tell you right away whether or not there's areas that you need to just go back in and break up some areas that got too clustered and too dark, you know, I need to maybe break some of this up so I get a better transition. Or if there's an area that just goes white too fast, you'll see that when you start doing your squinting. So I start squinting pretty early so I can catch that stuff right away. And when I'm trying to get into a specific area, like down here, I'm trying to get it to go a little darker. But I want to make it kind of even darkness. I don't want it to have blotchies. My motions get a little smaller, but my hand is still just as loose. My, my little figure eights that I'm doing, and some people do figure eights, some people do circles, all different kinds of things different people will do. But I, I start making smaller ones, but they're just as loose as the bigger ones. I'm not, you know, eh, 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 eh. I'm just, you know, letting the pen flow around. It's just flowing in smaller figure eights. And hopefully you're seeing how light he's becoming now that I've got some real true darks in the bottom. 
because he's not a particularly dark bird. He's got some dark spots on him. But they're more of like medium color spots or they're these stripe things. They're not, you know, he's not a, a dark colored bird. So I need to add enough contrast in there that he's going to end up having um, having some difference between him and whatever those areas are. So I'll move this up a little bit. So welcome to anybody who's just joining us. Nice to see you, Henriette. So I'm going to get this to be darker as it goes in here. I want this side to be lighter because I love all the, the motion that I've got going on here. So I'm probably only going to darken one side. But I need to darken this enough that his legs pop back out. Because his legs have really disappeared into the amount of color that I'm using down here. And I say color, but I guess I probably mean tone. The amount of gray that's down here is making his legs disappear into it because it's all the same. But as soon as I let some of this area get darker, his little legs start to appear back out of it. So he's got himself some uh, really honking big toes. Being an owl. Gonna let these toes be part of carrying the motion of the drawing out this direction. So I don't have only motion going out here. I want some to carry on opposite it as well. So I'm not just keeping all of it in one place, but still defining a little bit of his toes. So he looks like he's standing on something. Go back over here and start refining some of his little shadow areas. Again, loose marks, they're getting really small at this point because the smaller the detail, the more you need to get in there and make smaller scribbles, but they're still loose scribbles. They're not going to get that much more careful. So I'm still, I'm, my hand is not resting down on the paper. I'm letting it hover because that's going to keep me looser. I don't know why people are seeing a, a rainbow prism. <laughs> I don't get that. Makes no sense. This is plain old black ink on white paper. Not sure what is up with that. Looks like Europe is with us. What time is it over there? Did everybody just wake up or come home from being out? <laughs> now my little picture of him does not have his eyes being quite that wide. So now that I'm at the point where I can refine, I can go in and make much more tinier scribbles 
which is going to give me more control over making sure these eye shapes are right because that's the important part of this owl is all of these little spots inside the the details Twenty two forty three. So that's very late at night. Okay. It is late in Europe. Yeah, I see no prism at all on mine, but there you go. Maybe it's my computer just not seeing any of that. I could make sure my camera is well focused. Did that help at all? I'll just hit the focus button. I promise you it is simply plain old black ink. <laughs> That's all it is. And so as I get more of the, the grays in here, it's incumbent on me now to make sure that I get all of the, um, the blacks replaced. Because all of that stuff that I did earlier that was very loose starts looking lighter by comparison to the stuff that went really black. So... This is also something that <laughs> you can either take forever to do it or you can do it pretty quickly. I feel like I could noodle on this little guy for a really long time. And I want to be careful not to overdo it. I do like the idea that I've made the commitment that I want dark over here and light over here. Because that's going to keep me from overworking once I get outside this area. So I only want to focus on his little his little wings and try to give them a little bit more definition. He's such a pudgy little cute guy. Well, if you're somebody who's interested in scribble sketching, I would recommend if you've taken my um, 30 days to more confident sketching class, then go back through the class and do it all in scribble sketches. And the, the class is really, you know, giving you ideas on things to draw because half the time we spend in trying to get ourselves to draw all the time is like, I don't know what to draw. And just having an assignment is half the battle. So give yourself the assignment of going back through the lessons and do scribble sketches of each one. Now your first ones are going to be terrible. But you're going to figure out your style and the way that you think through it as you get through 30 days of doing it. If you do anything for 30 days, you're going to learn something by the time you get to the end of it. And my style of scribble sketching is different than other people's style. I looked at some tutorials on YouTube about it. And yeah, you know, I didn't agree with the way that some people make their lines. But I learned from it in how they think so that I could decide what works for me. And then as I've tried it more, I've worked out what my preferred way of making lines is. And I definitely have a preference for making figure eight lines. That definitely is uh, the kinds of, of ways that I end up making lines that make me happy. 
So make sure I've got a little bit coming off the top of his head too. So he's just as wild on top as he is elsewhere. And I kind of think I should call it done because I could end up noodling this to death. He's just got some feather shapes that I, I really want to get in here and, and fuss with. But if I were to spend a lot more time doing a sketch like this, I probably would not be um, going at it quite this aggressively if I was trying to do something that was going to be a refined sketch that I would keep forever. This is just a quick YouTube tutorial. But you can get really detailed or really loose with them, depending on how much time you spend. But I recommend trying this just to loosen up your style in general. Because you can't do this and be tight. You just can't. It's just not going to happen. So I think he's, I think I'm going to call him done. Because he's adorable. So there we go. See, the color affect is because the screen is an ink, like an inkjet printer. To create black, it needs to layer different colors. And because the lines are so thin, the colors can't line up to create black. That is quite possible if that's what you're seeing. I don't know. I don't know the science of it. I do know that this is all black and white. I promise you that. And I will post it on the internet so you can see. Does that help to turn it different ways so that you don't end up getting a prism of some kind? I'm not seeing the prism. So there you go. Well, I am going to go post this over on Facebook and Instagram so you can look at it and know that there's no color in it. But I wanted to say thank you for joining me for this video. It was fun hanging out with you and drawing cute little Rockefeller the owl. And I will see about setting up another one of these. Maybe, let's see, what are we at the end of the uh, month of January? Maybe mid-March or, you know, somewhere near my birthday, which is at the end of March. Then I'll do another one and we'll do something different. Different and crazy and inspiring, hopefully. All right, I will see you guys later. Thank you so much for visiting with me. Thank you for all your chit chat that I have been watching as, you, uh, as you've been chatting away. I really appreciate your attendance. I appreciate your likes and your thumbs up because that means the world to YouTube, apparently. They like to see interaction on videos. And give it a shot. Try your own scribble sketches and tag me on Instagram and Facebook and stuff so I can see what you're doing. You can also share them in my student Facebook group for art-classes.com students. And yeah, I'm going to go now. I'm going to stop yammering at you and let you get on with your day of art. I hope you get some art time today. All right. Take care, everybody. We'll see you later. If I can remember how to quit out of this, we'll find out.